Hey what's up guys, welcome back to Aimstone channel. As Bitcoin continues to trade sideways, in today's video we'll take a look at the Bitcoin market, a number of different Bitcoin charts, then a man who correctly predicted 3 Bitcoin capitulations before will explain what we should expect next. As always, let's start with the Bitcoin market. As of that time this recording BTC is trading slightly under $21,000. So yes, we have some minor dip compared to a few days ago. But we still remain in this sideway channel, and I think this will remain sideway until Wednesday, July 13. And we all know what is happening July 13. I'm not going to repeat what is going to happen there again. However, if we take a look at the bigger picture, we will notice that PTC is down by 75% from an all time high of $69,000 to the price that recently just happened of $17,000. That was the lowest point. But if you compare it to this current price, that would be 70% drop, it's still by quite a bit. Just to remind you guys, usually BTC drops in the bear market somewhere in between 80 to 85%. But as we know, history does not repeat itself but it rhymes. Usually fluctuations slightly bigger or slightly smaller, we will see. Gold just dipped even more, currently is trading slightly over $1740 per ounce. Not too long ago, it was almost at $2,000 per ounce, so it dropped by almost 15%. We can also notice that gold right now even lower where it was back 10 years ago during 2012 bull market. Back then it was about $2,000 per ounce, and now it's 15% lower. So technically, if you bought gold back then, now you would be in negative terms. However, I think gold is still valuable, but not in this financial world. It would be valuable if this financial world would not exist, if you would measure gold in gold just like it was thousands of years ago. And I think if something happened to our financial world, the same will happen to Bitcoin. Bitcoin will be measured in Bitcoin. Maybe with one Bitcoin you can buy an entire house, or maybe with a fraction of Bitcoin you can buy a car or something, but it will not be measured in fiat currency, that's the whole point. Going back to the gold, I know that Peter Chief must be very furious right now. We also know that Peter Chief has been loading up on gold mining stocks. But we know that when gold goes down, gold mining stocks will get killed. And this is what is happening to Peter Chief right now. I feel like Peter Chief is the worst money manager that has ever been in the existence. I'm not surprised why his clients are trying to run away from him, but apparently he suspended withdrawals and this is why he's dealing with all those regulators at this current moment. Plan B had something to say about gold versus bitcoin, and this is the chart that compares gold versus bitcoin, in fact gold priced in bitcoin. As we know in early days bitcoin is very cheap, and you could have bought one BTC for the fraction of an ounce of gold. It was going somewhere between 0.0001 ounce of gold and 0.1 ounce of gold. That would be in between 2010 and 2012. But as BTC continued to appreciate the price, the Bitcoin to gold ratio started to increase. And in 2015-2016 time, you could have bought one BTC for around one ounce of gold. And now you will have to pay 12 ounces of gold to buy a single Bitcoin. I believe when BTC was an all time high of $69,000, you could have purchased one BTC for close to 30 ounces of gold. So I believe this trend will still be valid into the future. Here is the cool chart, it represents Bitcoin Lightning Network. And by the way, this is my Twitter account. If you have not followed me yet, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and do so. Add Aimstone5, go follow me right now. So we know that as price was going down, the Bitcoin Lightning Network continues to increase. Now it's more than 4000 BTC locked on the Lightning Network, which is a good thing for the second layer of the Bitcoin protocol. Another great chart from Yuri. This chart compares Bitcoin versus dollar, and more specifically is it DXY. DXY is a dollar index. It measures the strength of the dollar relatively to the basket of the foreign currencies. And we can notice a clear patterns between Bitcoin price and the DXY. As we can see, when DXY goes down, BTC price increases. That's exactly what happened in the first cycle in 2013 and 2014 bull market. And then we saw capitulation till early 2017. DXY dropped once again while BTC price skyrocketed. And then we saw this in 2020 and 2021. DXY dropped and BTC price skyrocketed from the corona crash all the way to an all time high of 69,000 bucks. 
and since then BTC continued to drop while DXY continues to build momentum, and the reversal could be right around the corner. We do not know when will that happen, but we know for sure it will happen. Here is another interesting chart. This chart represents total supply and profit held by the short sum holders 90 days exponential moving average. Every time this ratio reaches the blue box, it means BTC price reached the bottom. This has been true for the three times. First time, it took place in 2012, then in 2015, then in 2019. And now the fourth time is taking place as we speak. However, if this ratio reaches this blue box, it does not mean the BTC will reverse right away. For example, in 2019, the capitulation phase took almost 4 months. So, as soon as we reach this blue box, it means we can go 3 to 4 months sideways until we see a massive reversal. But still, I think this is the great chart. Now, this is the chart of the day. This is the chart I want to show you guys. This chart was posted by Tour Demister. I hope I pronounced his name correctly. If not, forgive me for that. Well, apparently, according to him, he predicted every single capitulation all the way back since 2015. When 2015 BTC reached the bottom, this is what he tweeted. Bitcoin fundamentals have not changed, only the price and sentiment did. And he wrote capitulation. Well, that was fantastic call. Back then, BTC was trading slightly over $200. Then the same happened in 2018. This is what he wrote. He wrote capitulation. And exactly the same happened during the corona crash. He also wrote capitulation. And I hope somebody can verify this. And now, this is what he's writing currently. We down 73% from an all-time high. Based on how I feel in my body, which means I feel like shit, I would say this is Bitcoin capitulation. Look, everybody feel like shit right now, including me. So I agree when you feel like shit, this is the time to load on BTC. But unfortunately, human brain is a risk averse. When shit hits the fence, everybody is trying to weigh because of the fear. But ironically, this is the best time to buy Bitcoin. Another thing, I hope somebody can verify this guy if this is indeed the true. Maybe he was calling capitulation every single week when BTC was going down. For example, Peter Chief has been calling the recession all the way back since 2009. But when the recession hit in 2022, now he's taking all the credit. He's like, oh, I predicted this recession 10 years ago. Yes, but you were predicting recession every single week since 2009, so you have been wrong probably like 99% of the time. I hope this is not the case with this person, but nonetheless, this is a very and very cool chart. Okay, now let's move on with some Bitcoin news. Bitcoin faces Matt Gox Black Swan as a trustee prepares to unlock 150,000 BTC. Wow, 150k BTC, that would be a lot of money. The prospects of the rumored 150,000 BTC floating the market gets real as Matt Gox creditors choose how much money to receive in cash, Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. You should just give them shitcoin Bitcoin Cash and they can float the market with the Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin faces new selling threat in the near future as the users of defunded exchange Matt Gox prepare to get their BTC back. Well, I think this is not a really good news. But what will they get? Cash, Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash. Over the 8 years, Matt Gox imploded, it appears those who lost money are about to receive BTC. The event has been long coming, as have concerns of its impact on the market. The price of the Bitcoin at that time was a fraction of this current $20,000. Commentators have noted, leading to the suspicion that the recipient could instantly sell a large amount of BTC on the market, pressuring price. Well, what can I say, this is not a good news, but here's the thing, it does not mean Madgax users will receive 150,000 BTC, they will probably receive a combination of cash, Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, I hope mostly they will receive Bitcoin Cash. But let's also not forget that 150,000 BTC, yes it seems a lot, but in reality it's really not. Current market cap is over 400 billion dollars. And 150,000 BTC, that would be slightly over 3 billion bucks. So that's less than 1% of the total BTC monetary power. So even if they sell 150,000 BTC, I hope it will not be enough to further push the Bitcoin price down. Let's move on, another interesting piece of news. Class action lawsuit claims Solana's SOL is unregistered security. Interesting. 
Solana Lab is the latest crypto company to hit with the lawsuit accusing it, it of promoting unregistered security. The lawsuit accuses Solana Lab of selling unregistered security tokens in the form of Solana SOL from March 24, 2020. Defendants made enormous profit through the sale of SOL security to retail investors in the United States in the violation of registration provision of the federal and the state security law, and investors have suffered enormous losses. As far as I'm aware, Solana is still trading on the market, it's not like Sarah Luna that imploded, but Solana is not doing that well, to be quite frankly. If we take a look at Solana chart, we will notice that Solana had a massive collapse. It dropped from $260 a coin, that was an all-time high, to this current price of $33. So that would be around 95% drop. The good thing is it's still trading in the market, but it does not mean that it's not security. I think SEC has a lot of work to do to figure it out what's security and what is not. But we know for sure that Bitcoin is not, as Bitcoin was declared as a pure commodity. In fact, it was the only crypto that declared as the commodity. So this could mean that everything else might be security. Okay, now let's take a look at this quick video where Simon Dixon, one of the largest investors in Celsius and current shareholder explains what is happening with Celsius crisis. Um, like I mentioned, it's, it's among several crypto blue chip co companies on the brink of insolvency, but are they uh, going to be able to turn things around? What's the latest here? If I get my way, um, then they will be able to turn things around, but those are board decisions. Um, there's lawyers and there's traditional finance um, that could get in the way of um, the best result that I consider depositors could get at the moment. Um, so the, you know, the current situation is right now, is that our industry has created um, a 2007 style systemic risk event similar to Lehman Brothers, but built upon digital hard sound money. Whereas opposed to the fiat money was built upon debt, um, we have replicated some of the same processes, um, but built upon digital hard sound money. So we're going through that moment. We've been through moments like this before. Um, in the early cycle, in the first cycle, we had Mt. Gox that accidentally went from an exchange to a fractional reserve uh, Bitcoin bank. Um, and uh, that led to a pump and crash. Um, and then we had the ICO boom and bust where um, securities laws were being ignored and everyone was printing money. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that led to the next boom and bust cycle. Um, and now we've had a similar thing with uh, decentralized finance and yield. Um, and many companies, including Celsius, which uh, I should disclose, I was one of their largest depositors and I am a, um, one of their uh, lead investors and shareholders um, through a syndicate at Bank to the Future, um, have found themselves in a scenario where we need to do a disaster recovery. Um, but thankfully, we've done that many times. Um, we did it with Bitfinex um, and we would like to do the same again, but slightly different. So that kind of brings us to the current situation. Yep didn't want to interrupt you there, just when you say regulations not followed, I guess my, my next question is, are regulators doing anything looking at crypto lending? Have they stepped in? Will they step uh, yeah, in? Yes, so um, every, every lending platform has been contacted by different regulatory bod bodies and the consensus is that they consider it a security. Um, and the reason they consider it a security is because if something is a low risk saving account, it needs to be treated very differently to something that has inherent risk, that needs disclosures, that needs to do suitability testing, and everything that we have to do at Bank to the Future when people invest, making sure that it's only a percentage of their income, making sure that they know they can lose their money, um, and those types of things. And that is really the difference. Um, and then, of course, you have the higher level, the maximum scrutiny, which is when you're not, your deposits aren't matched one-to-one. -one. Um, so you've got peer-to-peer, -peer, which is where they're matched one-to-one, -one. Then you have securities where they're matched one-to-one, -one, but there's a, a risk and there's investment decisions happening in the middle. And then finally, when they're not matched one-to-one, -one, you have a fractional reserve bank that requires immense regulatory oversight in order to ensure that those risks are being managed, deposit insurance, mm. um, bailout potential, bail-in potentials. Um, and it, it, it appears that um, over time, uh, it has deviated from its original model to these platforms becoming either unlicensed banks or unregistered securities businesses. But there is that risk, Simon, that some folks might just lose all their life savings 
Um, I don't believe you will lose it all because there is a big chunk of the deposit that's just simply in, um, in a liquidity issue. Um, so there will be a percentage that comes back. Um, but if TradFi do it their way, they may cause a ginormous crash, sell it at the bottom, strip off all the assets, and I want to make sure that everybody on record knows that there are much better solutions and they have a fiduciary duty to pick the right solutions that give um, depositors and creditors um, the best solutions, then shareholders, and if there's a future to the company that can be built, I want to make sure that people know that there are people and we put together a multi-billion dollar syndicate um, that can take um, a, a model forward and try and give both you know, depositors first, then shareholders a future. Look, it seems like Simon Dixon really knows what he is talking about, and it seems like Celsius is paying off the debt left and right. I really hope Celsius will pull this off and save the company, so hopefully the users will get at least some of the funds back. Let me know what you guys think about Celsius and this current market. Hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't.